everyone, my name is Eric and this is another video with rendering and movie making tips with Dragonfly. Today we will continue talking about using multi ROI in your images and movies, again using the measurement inspector. In this video we will assume that you already know how to generate these multi ROIs and we will focus mainly on, on how to display them properly in 3D. So for this video, I've already loaded a rock tomography dataset. Particles in the dataset have been individually labeled in the form of a multi ROI. So let's switch to 3D. As usual, we will adjust the window leveling and we will apply the grayscale solid preset. I will then display the multi ROI. And as for the scatter values, I will select the theta of maximum eigenvector. So let's use the measurement inspector so we can filter these labels by their respective theta values. So we will adjust the out window opacity to zero, but only for the highlight intensity. The ROI opacity will remain at full. Modifying the window will decolorize the out of window labels, meaning that the labels having a value of theta outside this range are not colorized. For visual impact, let's enable the virtual floor as we have seen in a previous video. Here again in this case we will select the z-plane for the floor. We can adjust the reflective value of the floor. Now let's make a movie of what we have shown so far. I will enable the focus effect and adjust the strength to slightly blur the back of the scene. I will restore the window leveling to show the outside of the rock sample and, and I will also narrow the window in the measurement inspector to decolorize everything. This is the state in which I wish to start my movie. Let's show the movie maker tool. The first keyframe is automatically created. So next, let's use the window leveling panel to hide the outside of the rock sample, keeping only the decolorized particles. And we can then add a keyframe. We will then click rotate to add a 180 rotation in our movie. In the measurement inspector, we then reset or bring the right border of the window to the maximum value and we update the second rotation keyframe so that it will now include the updated scalar values property. We move the thumbnail along the timeline to increase the duration of the transition and rotation. We can also show the legend so it will appear in our movie. We can change the position and resize the legend as well. But take note that the visibility state of all objects is stored in the keyframe, so we must update the keyframes to include the visible legends. 